Hi, this is Dr. Michelle Maidenberg. Today I'm going to be speaking about, I guess, you know, kind of an assessment of where we're at, you know, talking more about our emotions and then also doing a guided imagery meditation. So at the end of the week, I typically do kind of more of a contemplative meditation and that allows me to really think about where I'm at, how I'm feeling, you know, how the week was for me. You know, so I'll just sit and, you know, close my eyes and I practice TM, which is Transcendental Meditation. So, you know, sometimes I'll have an intention or something that I'm specifically thinking about. And Friday is a really good day to kind of recalibrate and really assess my week and, you know, kind of where I'm at. So I, I'm definitely noticing that it's been progressively over the week getting a little bit harder to cope, I'm going to say, and for good reason you know, for all of us is like, for example, last night, the numbers are up to 5,000, you know, people who died and that number is just staggering. And I'm thinking about all the people who are suffering and how many people are bereft and all the people who died alone and didn't get necessarily a proper burial um, or even get a proper eulogy and to be celebrated for the life that they had which is really sad to me um, that somebody would kind of die with not really, you know, properly being remembered. You know, I'm also thinking about, I shared about my grandmother and, you know, as time goes on, it's really scary to me, you know, in terms of her predicament and not being able to really speak with her is becoming more and more difficult for me because of course I worry about her. Um, you know, to me, what I'm seeing is that there's very little that has changed, you know, for example, with healthcare uh, providers in terms of getting the proper equipment. So, you know, thinking about how they're at risk. And then even a bigger issue for me is uh, us, not unanimously, you know, universally in the U.S. practicing social distancing or physical distancing and how that could potentially lengthen this process, could result in more deaths. And, you know, I find myself getting sometimes hopeless or fearful and then even angry and frustrated um, and judgmental. I'm going to say that too. So I just want to validate all of those feelings because some of you may be feeling the same way that I am. And that's what I've been hearing. Um, so a couple of things. One is because... The vulnerability, I guess, you know, over time has increased. And for me, over the week, past week, I find that it's even more difficult to be in the present moment and really more difficult to just be here. So there's a couple of kind of acronyms and things I wanted to share maybe to help both myself and you with this. So um, if we think of the word fear, you know, which innately comes from anxiety because this is an anxiety provoking situation. One, because we don't see any end in sight. We don't know when that will be. And two, right, there's so much uncertainty about it. We don't even know fully about the disease. You know, we see, first we thought it was just older people that it affects. And now I have personally seen younger people being negatively impacted in a very, very fundamental way. Um, so to think of fear, F-E-A-R, uh, face everything and rise or face your emotions and rise and you know we need to feel in order to heal you know because it's so painful to sit with these feelings we're compelled to want to either disregard them or deny them or push them away or cut off from them and our mind is gonna kind of take actions on behalf of that because it's so uncomfortable because our mind always wants us to be safe and comfortable. And it always puts things into our minds, I'm gonna say, in order to go in that direction. Um, so I was also thinking about, you know, uh, one, one of uh, my children clients came in and they referred to, came in, I meant remotely, but um, referred to the coronavirus as the boogeyman. And I thought that that was just such an interesting metaphor and they explained it because you kind of never know when it's going to get you and you never know where it lurks and uh, you never know kind of the impact it's going to have, right? Because that varies from person to person and it was a pretty good 
metaphor, I think, for what we're going through is this lurking boogeyman behind us. So if you notice, I wear hats, which I really love, and I love color and you know vibrancy. It really makes me feel alive. Um, you know, particularly with this weather that's been pretty, in New York, it's been pretty rainy and gloomy and it's a little pick me up. Um, and you know, when I talk to people, I think about, and I ask them what their superpower is, like what have they, what tool or what skill or what thing can they take with them in order to be more resilient and to kind of cope with adversity, you know, and I, you know, I, I really think of my hats and because they're on my head, right? So it reminds me that I can't believe everything that I think. And it also reminds me that when my mind is challenging me to stay in safety and comfort, um, that I that I really need to challenge myself and go out of my comfort zone. And the benefit of that is the more that you go out of your comfort zone, the more that you build tolerance uh, to discomfort and you strengthen that muscle and there's no way of getting out of discomfort the uncertainty um, Just causes us to be in a state of discomfort um, And I know even the uncertainty around like the summer is coming Will my children be able to go to camp which they love to do? You know will we have a summer, you know, so to speak we'll be able to really just freely roam and experience our lives and be out in nature um, so a lot of questions, you know, a lot of questions that come up for us. So I, you know, if you could try to think outside of the box and think about what your superpower is, um, you know, and it could be anything that reminds you of your strength. It could be like a bracelet that has sentimental value. It could be a favorite, you know, pair of like sweatpants or leggings, you know, or, you know, a favorite hoodie, whatever it is, you know, like, you know, and it's, like I said, it's different for everybody. So the guided meditation that we're going to do today is going to be focused on guided imagery. We're going to tap into that strength and resilience. Um, so if you could close your eyes and again, um, sit back and also like a straight posture. Okay. And if you could just, again, kind of get in the present moment with your body and notice how your body's feeling. And again, just close your eyes. I want you to think about a time in your life that was particularly challenging. Recall something. A time of adversity for you. It could have been a time where you were feeling helpless or hopeless. A time where it was difficult to kind of see your way through it, see the light at the end of the tunnel. It might have been a time that you felt really stuck and felt like you couldn't get out of it. It could have been a time where it was causing you to feel maybe anxious or depressed. And I really want you to tap very viscerally into those feelings, the emotions that you carry during that time. You know, what particularly was going on for you in that moment? Were you feeling sad? Were you feeling uncomfortable? Were you feeling lost? Were you feeling out of control? Any feelings that came up, really try to tap into them as much as you can. And then I want you to remind yourself of when you were able to like kind of see through it and work through it. And try your best to tap into what allowed you to do that. Was it your kindness? Was it your motivation? Was it support that you got from somebody that made you feel loved and respected? What was it your feeling of self worth and confidence in your abilities? Whatever it is. 
and try to come up with an image of what that looks like for you. Whatever source of strength that is. It could be a shape. It could be anything. And I want you to think about opening the palms of your hands, which you could do on the top of your lap and putting whatever that strength was for you in the palms of your hand. And notice it being there and how it feels in your body and your emotions and reaction to it. And I want you to take a moment to connect to that strength, to extrapolate whatever you need from it to get you through the current moment and to wear it like a cloak or an armor and to imagine whether it seeps into your hands or you put it over your shoulders like a cloak or you put it on your face right, to remind you that it's there and to remind you of your warmth and compassion. And before we end, I want you to think about holding on to it and calling upon it when you need it most. It's always there and it's always accessible. And when I count to three and when you're ready, you could open your eyes. One, two, and three. Thank you again for listening. I wish you and your families a good weekend and that you should all be safe and healthy. Thank you.